What do I do when I, I know how to give forgiveness? I think, you know, we do our best with that. What happens though when I'm asking for forgiveness and there's no forgiveness that's being offered? What do I do then? Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz and this is Ascension Presents. So uh, someone asked me this question. They told me a story and in their story, they shared how they were close with someone at one point. And what they had done is, is they, had, they had uttered kind of some cruel words, right? They had uttered some words in their own hurt, in their own anger, and they kind of lashed out at their friend. And ever since then, their friend has been kind of away, for lack of a better term. The friend hasn't responded to their calls or their texts or any kind of overture to having communication. This person said, I just, I know what it is to offer forgiveness. What happens when I'm asking for forgiveness and it's not being given? And, and I think it's such a great question because I think a lot of us will find ourselves in a position where forgiveness is not being offered because we've done something wrong. Now, this is clarif clarification in this situation, this person to describe, and they took full responsibility. They said, I said this thing, I shouldn't have said it. I said it in a way I shouldn't have said it. They, I was wrong, basically saying I was wrong. And yet they realize, here's the, <laughs> the damage was done. You might be familiar with this scenario. This might actually be something that you've lived. I know it's something that I live, I, I've lived. There's a saying, you know, what can't be taken back, uh, the rock after it's thrown, the glass after it's broken, and the word after it's been uttered. You know, those things can't be taken back. The damage is done. I've been on both ends. I've been on the receiving end of that, where someone has said stuff to me that, and then later on they're saying, I'm really sorry, and I realize, like, okay, I mean, I forgive you, but we're not gonna be friends anymore. And, and again, that might be small of me, that might be petty of me, but the reality is, I forgive you, I'm not holding on to this at all. Like, I release you from your debt, like we said in another video. At the same time, I realize now that I can't trust you, and I don't want to trust you. And there's something about that that's like, okay, maybe that's, again, maybe that's not grace. Maybe that's, again, maybe that's, that's the opposite of grace. I need to pray about that, obviously. But I've also had... I've asked for, forgive, for forgiveness, and maybe someone's given it to me, but they have not wanted to be reconciled. They've not wanted to be friends again. You know, they've not wanted to be in each other's lives again. This happens to us all of the time, especially how broken we can be. What do you do then when the damage has been done? I think there's at least two things we can do. One is, gosh, <laughs> it's called being patient. But here's the problem. I remember here, hearing uh, one of our missionaries share she said that a priest had told her that she was praying for patience and, she, and, and the priest said, well, you know that the word patience actually means long suffering. And she said, well, I guess I don't want patience anymore. I don't want, I don't want patience. Never mind. Patience means long suffering. And there's something about the fact that, okay, I did that. The damage has been done and I have to experience the consequences of what I've done. That, that's just reality. That's reality in every one of our lives. I've done this, the damage is done. And this person is not willing to have a relationship with me anymore. They're not willing to forgive me. They're not willing, willing to reconcile with me. They're not willing to restore our friendship. Maybe it's not so overly encouraging initially, but I'm telling you, this is, I think, the only way forward. First, patience. I have to accept the fact that I've done damage. The damage is done. And now here are the consequences. I broke it. I broke the relationship. Sometimes the person just can't or won't trust me enough to enter back into it. And at some level, I have to say, okay, patience, long suffering. The second thing is I have to love them. I, I have to, I have to love because one of the easiest things to do is, okay, I did this to them, but then I asked for, asked for forgiveness and what the heck, how come they, how come they won't give me forgiveness? Then I'm going to become bitter towards them. No, I'm going to become resentful towards them. Even though I know that it was my fault. I did the thing. I hurt them to such a degree, and maybe you might even think, as time goes on, you might think, well, it's not that big of a deal. The way they're hurting me now is way worse than the way I hurt them. Well, why don't they just grow up? Why don't they get a thicker skin? Whatever that thing is, we can play these mental tricks with ourselves that convince us I don't have to love them anymore. Because loving them means my heart is still capable of being wounded by them. Oftentimes in our pain, we, uh, become callous. Nope, you're not going to hurt me anymore. You know, I, I know what I've done. I've lost this. I've done this thing, but I'm not going to be remain soft. I'm not going to remain open to being hurt again. I'm going to become callous. That is not the way forward. 
if they won't forgive you, if they won't forgive me, I have to be patient, long-suffering, knowing that I, I did this to myself. But secondly, I have to have my heart that's open to them. Meaning when I say I have to keep loving them, I have to do a couple things. One, I have to fight against resentment. I have to fight against bitterness. Number two, I have to pray for them. I have to will their good on a regular basis. Not with the conditional prayer of God, bring them back into my life. But in the, the self-sacrificial prayer of God, give them whatever it is they need. God, in this day, give them whatever it is they need. That patience long-suffering, accepting, I did this, then realizing the truth, right? Consequences are real. And secondly, loving someone, even in the midst of my broken heart, even in the midst of, they don't love me back. But to be able to say, okay, that's okay. The third thing, I guess, here's an addendum, a little, you know, uh, bonus round. It's easy in those moments to feel rejected. It's easy in those moments to put coals on our own head. It's easy in those moments to say, um, if I was only better, if only I was a holier, if only I was, you know, perfect, I never would have brought myself to this place and just beat ourselves up. We've said this before, I will say it again, God is never glorified when we beat ourselves up. He's never honored when we, we pile, dog pile on ourselves. But simply let him love you. He does want to, he wants to love you. You didn't break that relationship. He wants to love you, even if someone else doesn't. Be patient, not only with them, be patient with yourself. Love, not only love them, but love yourself. And let the Lord God love you in the midst of what feels like rejection, in the midst of what is failure, in the midst of your own weakness and woundedness, because the story's not over. The story's not over. There's always more to come. I don't know what it will be. And we can't know what it will be. But I do know this. The story's not done. So be patient with them and with yourself. Love, love them and yourself. And let yourself be loved by the Lord and by the people who still, still truly do love you. For all of us here to present, my name is Father Mike. God bless.